Once you get a footnote into your Word document, how do you change how it's formatted? You've probably figured out it's not the most straightforward process in the world. Where's the command for changing that separator line? Can I give my footnotes a little more space? I'll demystify footnote formatting coming up. Hi, I'm Deborah Saavedra of Legal Office Guru, your resource for legal professionals using Microsoft Office. And in today's video, I'm going to show you all about footnote formatting, how to change the default formatting for separator lines and the default continuation notice, and restyling footnotes to give them a bit more space between each footnote or whatever other formatting you prefer. We've got a lot of ground to cover, so let's get started. Inserting a footnote in your text is easy enough. Just go to the References tab and click Insert Footnote. But once you have footnotes, is it possible to change the formatting? Yes, it is, but it's not the most easy to find process. First, let's deal with the footnote separators and continuation messages. Those, surprisingly, are user configurable. Go to the View tab and change your view to Draft. Don't worry, you can go back to Print Layout or whatever other view you prefer afterward. Double click on a footnote number. The pane that opens at the bottom of your Word window will show you your footnotes. Not only that, but if you use this drop down next to footnotes, you'll have access to three other footnote features. Footnote separator, that line that separates your footnotes from the main text, and the footnote continuation separator and footnote continuation notice, both of which would only come into view if you have an especially long footnote that won't fit on the bottom of a single page. By the way, if this document had endnotes, there would be three additional choices for endnotes as well. All three of these are editable in exactly the same way. I choose one of them from the drop-down and just type. I can make this any character I want and any length I want. If someone has changed it and I want it changed back to the default, I can go back through those steps and press Reset. If you want a numbering scheme other than the standard Arabic numerals, go to the References tab and click the tiny launcher arrow in the lower right-hand corner of the Footnotes command group to bring up the Footnote and EndNote dialog box. You can choose a different numbering scheme under Format, Number Format, and even start numbering at a different number if you need to, or reset numbering by document section or page. Then decide if you want those settings to apply to the whole document, the section you're in, or just certain text you've selected. If you're not happy with the spacing between your footnotes, you might be tempted to double-click into the footnote area and try to fix the formatting directly. Here's a better idea. Change the underlying style for your footnote text, and with that one action, every footnote, current and future, will conform to that new formatting. How to figure out what style to change? Click your cursor somewhere inside any footnote, then press Shift F1 to bring up the Reveal Formatting pane on the right. Look over here under Paragraph Style. The Reveal Formatting pane identifies it as Footnote Text. This is what controls the formatting of all footnote text in your document. Click the hyperlink Paragraph Style and Word will take you directly to the Style dialog box. Click Modify, and you can change whatever formatting you want in the Modify Style dialog box. For example, I want to give each footnote a little more breathing room, so I'm going to click Format in the lower left-hand corner, then Paragraph, then put in 12 points of space, after each footnote so they'll be a bit more spread out. 
that Modify Style dialog box gives you access to all sorts of formatting options, so feel free to experiment a bit. I'll click OK and then Apply to make my changes. Whew! That's a lot to learn, but if you ever wanted to tweak your footnotes, you've now got a resource for figuring out how. And true confessions time, I often don't remember quite how this is done and have to go back to my own tutorials to refresh my memory. So don't feel bad if you have to review this again. And if you're in the middle of preparing a brief and you're having trouble keeping up with all the court's formatting requirements, maybe I can help. I've got a brief requirements checklist you can download free that'll help you sort through your court's various rules and get all your requirements in one place for easy reference. Just check the link above or in the description below to get your free checklist today.